Woe be unto him who opens one of the seven gateways to hell, because through that gateway, evil will invade the world. Edinger for his first one in 1981 and we're here to talk about I think probably the nastiest movie in 1981 definitely the most hardcore um, Cannibal Ferox aka Make Them Die Slowly directed by Umberto Lenzi how you doing Art? I'm doing well I have to correct you though it's Make Them Die Slowly aka Cannibal Ferox I know you like on how old you are this is not a movie that um, what year were you born? I was born 86, but I did see oh, the VHS okay. cover. I take it all back. You can say Cannibal Ferox, but it's all good. It's all good. You're in the clear. All You're right. in the clear. But it bothers me when people born in 1980 or earlier refer to certain movies by their um, original titles. For example, 
someone my age or older. I'm born in 75, but I gave it to 1980. Um, you know, Make Them Die Slowly was the name for years. You know, I mean, that's what it was released as stateside. It's not City of the Living Dead. Unless you're British, it's the gates of hell. You know, and if you're my age or so, and you're calling it City of the Living Dead, you're Johnny Come Lately. Now, if you're younger, that's fine. Um, it's not Hell of the Living Dead. It's Night of the Zombies. And it sure as fuck is not Mad Max 2. It's the Road Warriors, you know? But if you're younger, it can be whatever. Now, there's exceptions to this rule. For example, even though I saw it first as Seven Doors of Death, I call it the Beyond because as I was watching it as Seven Doors of Death, I already was educated to know that it was like a messed up version of the Beyond. Same thing with Tenebrae. Like when I rented it as Unsane, I knew of Tenebrae, but like Creepers is Creepers because that was a huge release as a soundtrack and everything. So maybe I'm just, um, maybe these are all just personal choices in the end. But like, um, yeah, this movie's called Make Them Die Slowly. I actually prefer that title because it it sounds too much like it's already kind of a rip of Cannibal Holocaust. So then when they say Cannibal Ferrex, you're like, eh. But also, you forgot one. City of the Walking Dead is how I originally saw Nightmare City. And it had that uh, really cheesy cover. And the, the original trailer for City of the Walking Dead was way back. It was awesome. with the, Was that an Aquarius or something? I don't know. It was one of those yeah. companies that picked it up. That was just always uh, a memorable trailer, too. That's a good example as well. Yes. Yeah, so, so I actually did see these originally on the VHS. It's like Gates of Hell was Gates of Hell, Night of the Zombies, the um, uh, Bruno Mattei one, of course. But sometimes it's it's easier as the, the wide re-releases, especially Night of the Zombies, because then you have the Joel M. Reed movie from the year later, which is... It is quite really confusing, good. yes. Yeah, which I, I feel bad for the poor soul that tried to rent uh, Bruno Mattei's, but ended up getting Joel M. Reed. <laughs> Terrible. Terrible, terrible not a terrible movie, but like a very different movie. So. I'm not a big fan of uh, Joel Embry's Night of the Zombies, but I love Bruno Mattei's Night of the Zombies. I guess it's a different kind of trash for different kinds of people, right? True. Well, I'm not big on show and tell, but um, I ended up in 1996 for $5 from my hometown video chain where I first rented it, getting this, uh, I have it blurred out, this big box tape of Make Them Die Slowly. And what's so cool about it is it has the Video Factory stickers. That's my chain from my hometown. They had 26 locations, I believe, in their peak. And they had everything. It wasn't like, um, you know, all these people have these stories of like rummaging in these dark, like mom and pop video stores. I rented stuff like this in a brightly lit commercial mainstream environment. You know, it's just you walk in, you rent, make them die slowly. And, um, you know, it, it was like, um, locally owned but it was definitely not um some small mom and pop situation it was like a big um big brightly lit video store i rented last house on dead end street there uh lots of other movies that uh people had a harder time finding elsewhere were right there at my fingertips as a kid so we had my uh video store that i discovered we had some local ones that were chains but they had they had you know it was random what you get you know every once in a while you find yeah. something weird but there was one that I found when I was like 12 or 13 and my mom went to like some stupid store that was like, you know, probably like four miles away, but that's far for your mom to drive back in the day. Mom didn't drive you very far. When you go to the video store around the block, you don't get shit. So eventually we, she was just going to this store and I was like, oh, there's a video store next door. That's I love that stuff. So I went in there and I walked in and it looked kind of like big and spread out, but they didn't have a horror section. And I was like, I was looking through their action movies and I saw her seeing some weird shit. I saw Deadbeat at Dawn and I was like, I've seen that cover, okay. but I don't really know what it is. And then I was like, hey, so you guys just like mix your horror movies in with the action? They're like, no, there's a whole room back there. And I look back and there's this, this whole little section and they had like a sci-fi and horror. And I walked back there and they had everything. And I was just like, holy shit. They had fucking a zombie six monster hunter tape. The, I was like, I didn't ever, I didn't even know what the fuck that was. Like I knew what zombie yeah. was, but I was just like, what is this? Not knowing that it's absurd from Anthropophagus 2, which is from 81 as well. But it Wizard was just, or something released it as Monster Hunter 2, right? They released it as a. a, a no, yeah, was that the uh, the Wizard tape was Monster Hunter. It had yeah. uh, the cross on the cover and he was then the right. ghouls like crawling out. Because that's how yeah. I first saw that movie. 
They should have put a, a bottle of booze in Edward Purdom's hand on the fucking cover <laughs> instead of the cross. It would have made a little bit more sense. But uh, no, it was just weird. It blew my mind, you know, it's just seeing all that stuff. And that's where the first time I think the guy said, well, maybe, I, you know, I liked Romero, said the stuff I liked. He's like, well, maybe you should get some of the Fulci stuff. And that's when I first, you know, I was like, oh, cool. So, I mean, this guy, he guided me, man. It takes a weirdo at a video oh. store to guide another weirdo. But uh, they did have the Make Them Die Slowly tape, but I didn't have the balls to run it and ask my mom because that cover is pretty pretty explicit. You know what I mean? It just has, like, the breast hanging out and everything yeah. like that. I didn't have the guts. I remember them selling it. They sold it. And I, I didn't. Yeah. I was like, fuck, I know that's worth money, but I just didn't I didn't have the guts to ask for it. That's video yeah. store memories. There you go. Sweet childhoods we had. <laughs> Uh, with our parents putting up with our fucking weirdness. But uh, um, so I guess the plot of Make Them Die Slowly or Cannibal Ferox is a pretty simple one if you know the cannibal films. So Lorene DeSell, she wants to prove that cannibalism doesn't exist. So she travels to this, the Amazon, to prove it uh, with her brother and uh, her very, I guess, uh, lo- I guess you'd say loose friend. Um, and they go there and they run into Mike who is a drug-fueled maniac played by Giovanni Lamberto Radici and his uh, little kind of wimpy friend, and they run into cannibals, and they have to survive. That's pretty much the plot. It's a very simple plot. Unlike Cannibal Holocaust, the message is muddled, I would say, and probably, I don't know, not as genuine <laughs> as Cannibal Holocaust. This is as this one's pure exploitation, folks. I think it is. I think it's a it's it's the sillier version of Cannibal Holocaust. That, Maybe gorier, I don't know. I would say more offensive. I know a lot of people think Cannibal Holocaust is more offensive, but I feel like Cannibal Holocaust has more of a message to say. So when there's no message, I think that people, it's just weird. It's, you know, it's not as effective as its message to me. I still like the movie, but I think it's the like campier, grosser version of Cannibal Holocaust. How do you feel about Cannibal Ferox or Make Them Die Slowly? I I agree with a good portion of what you said it's definitely campy what's odd about it is there aren't too many movies that are as sick as make them die slowly yet as campy you know to be yeah. both of those things well, there are a couple of things came to mind in my most recent rewatch one of which is how in the hell does cannibal holocaust come off as serious as it is you know it's like it should be campy, but it isn't. Like, maybe aspects of it are with the dubbing. But Cannibal Holocaust really comes off as a mean, mean movie. Make Them Die Slowly at times comes off vicious because it has the animal cruelty. It has some really sick scenes, but it has so many, like, extraordinarily silly lines of ADR and um, very campy performances. So... It's, it's interesting because you have this split in this one movie of um, humor and extreme sadism. And like, so you have all these sadistic things happening and then you have a lot of laughs at the same time. But um, I do think it has a pretty clear message. I mean, the message is that uh, Westerners are capable of savagery and that, uh, you know, the... Um, the the mean westerner mike is the is the villain you know he's the guy who really um and, and what the um what the locals do is just uh, in response to the, the terror folks. that the western man is it's the same you know, it's the same it's the message same as premise, Holocaust, right? but it's just it's i guess it's it just doesn't have the finesse muddled is the wrong word it doesn't have the finesse of it does not have the finesse <laughs> and um neither film is subtle um no it you know, Cannibal Holocaust is a much um, better looking movie. That's a little bit hard to tell at home. When we screened them in 35 millimeter here in Pittsburgh, that would have been October 10th and 11th, 2008. We booked a double feature um, in this giant movie, single screen movie theater here. And um, when you watch them back to back, you can really see that some of Cannibal Holocaust is shot in 35 millimeter. Whereas Make Them Die Slowly is 16 millimeter blown up. And on film, that it really does have a grainy look to it that is notable theatrically. At home, uh, 16 millimeter transferred to digital, a lot of that grain kind of disappears. And so 
it um you can't really tell how much better made Cannibal Holocaust is, or big, or just not even better made, but just bigger budgeted. It just uh, the 35 millimeter versus 16 millimeter it has a huge impact on the audience. And when you watch them back to back, you're like, oh, well, this is the cheaper movie and this is the fancier movie. Uh, it just kind of is in your face that way. For sure. I mean, yeah, I can tell it's definitely like the B picture of it. You know, I always kind of compare This is a weird comparison, but it's not budget wise. But if you look at like Night of Living Dead as an A picture of like terms of like impact and quality, you look at Return of Living Dead as like a campier, almost parroting version of it, even though Return's pretty smart. And that would, I always compared that. Like it was Holocaust and Ferox in that aspect. You speak of funny lines and, uh, uh, Mike is one of the characters that really overdoes it here. And uh, the, the moment that gets me, it's a moment that I never forgot and I would just chuckle to myself as he goes to that big story and he has that, that pause where he's like, and ate his genitals. And then not two and a half minutes later, she's sitting there by the campfire and she's like reminiscing about the day. And she literally, it's like, we don't need a flashback in her mind of her hearing and ate his genitals. Ate his genitals. I don't know who decided to ADR that, if they thought it was funny or not. But then it has that another line in her head and then it does that music key like, like and it's just like such an awkwardly on, on like unintentional humorous moment like and holocaust has them i guess you would say if, but the more you watch holocaust i think the less it becomes at all you know what i mean but well ferox just gets goofier like they have the moment where the guy's like the the, the guy's like oh i love america or, it's just so many goofy moments or where's your stud there's just a lot of lines. Yeah, that stand I, out. I mean, I haven't seen it as many times as I've seen Cannibal Holocaust. But what does he say? Um, what you into ecology now, twat, or something like that? <laughs> There's a lot of so twats. Like, a lot, a lot of, of twats. And twats just a funny word. I mean, yeah, yeah. Just say it. Say it at work tomorrow. People will laugh. Like a twat yeah, makes people laugh. You know, like if someone is angry about something, they go, like, oh, "She's a this shit. She's a twat." People laugh. They always laugh. It's just funny. Um, yeah, the music is um, is like it's like danceable, you know, and you want to just like um, get up and boogie uh, and and sway to and fro. Uh, but that's an interesting element of the movie for sure too. Uh, but yeah, it's a humdinger. The the um, from its like cast it has a great cast, you know. Oh, amazing uh, cast. And uh, it, it's sort of like Cannibal Holocaust for people who are in it for like the like most base reasons, just like those of us who just get a kick out of seeing sick things, you know. Um, I'm one of those people, yeah, and uh, the movie gets me going. I think it's just a laugh riot, you know. It's um, it's not one of my favorite movies. But I, but I like it a lot. You know, it's a, it's a gem. You know, like, I've gotten to meet some of these people over the years, and it's just like, whoever thought that would happen, you know? And so I've sat down with at least four of the cast members in person over the years, and, you know, it's just sitting next to someone who was there and trying to pick their brain about it is always interesting. It's like... You were actually there in the Amazon saying these ridiculous things. And Giovanni Lamberto Radici does not. He did not care for this film or Lindsay, which is weird because you switch it around because uh, Robert Kerman, who's in this, and they're both in this. Um, Giovanni hated Lindsay, while Kerman liked Lindsay, and Giovanni liked Ruggiero, while Kerman hated Ruggiero. Ruggiero. Yeah. I mean, so it's kind of weird that I, I mean, I don't think that Ruggiero and Umberto were probably the easiest or nicest people all the time, but making those movies, I don't know how you could be. A lot of stress, a lot of fucked up shit you're doing. <laughs> yeah, Kerman was interesting. By the time we got to know him, he was older and just, you know, just kind of like a pleasant but slightly off older gentleman. I think I first met him in 2005. He was the first of these guys I met. And then I spent some time with him in 2011 and 2014 as well. And, um, you know, he just came from a different time and place than the rest of us. Like, we were all hanging out in a hotel room in Chiller and he just um, he just suddenly was like, okay, let's all get naked. And it was hard to tell if he was kidding or not, you know? Um, yeah. It was like, um, 
But yeah, just a, an interesting character. Smart guy, pleasant guy. Uh, Giovanni Lombardo Radice, definitely a very intellectual, smart. And um, Zora Karova is funny because her English isn't great. So communicating with her, I was communicating through her daughter or through Sylvia Colatina, uh, the little girl from House by the Cemetery. And Zora Karova had a good sense of humor about these movies. I got to teach her the term nunsploitation. That was a big moment in my um, fandom. She loved it, learning that word. Um, and then um, Venantino Venantini appeared at one of these shows that I got to help with guests. So that was in 2010. And, you know, seeing him reunite with Giovanni was cool. They were both there at the same time. Because, um, yeah, he kills him in Gates of Hell. Yeah, um, brutally. Brutally. But, yeah, he's an actor who was in all sorts of Everything. things. All sorts of types of movies. Sora Karova was in other kinds of movies too. She's in that American Fever dance movie, um, which is a fun movie. Um, you can find it. But I mean, Campbell Ferox, like, it, it just, it's relentless too. It's like, so it's relatively early in the movie. It's about halfway through the movie or so that Giovanni Lombardo Radice's character gets his dick cut off. And you're yep. like, this movie still has all this way to go. What else is going to happen? And other things, <laughs> you know, they, they find other extreme things to show you. But um, it, def yeah. it definitely has that huge plot point. And like so many of these movies share so many similarities, like watching, rewatching all these from like 19, late 70s or early 80s. It's just like we start in New York and then we jump to the Amazon. I mean, it's almost all of them. Holocaust, Ferox, Eaten Alive, Zombie Holocaust, Zombie, um, and even some other ones like that. It's just so crazy to do that. And then so many of the same cast members pop up. Like if you look at that early time, you have Perry popping up in City of the Living Dead, Cannibal Holocaust, and Cannibal Ferox. You have Venetini popping up in Cannibal Apocalypse, City of the Living Dead, and Cannibal Ferox. Kerman in Holocaust, Eaten Alive, and Fer It's almost like if you take like five or six of these actors, they just spread them apart. Giovanni's in a It's just like that small little thing. And it seemed like Lindsay and, and Fulci would share actors a bit. I know that they were a little bit... Fulci and Lindsay didn't like anybody else but Fulci. And they got along. I guess those two got along better than a lot of the other guys. Probably because they hated everyone else. I don't know. But it just, it just seems like a... a this one, I, I always forget that all the actors that are in the New York scenes. Like, I, and I didn't even register the other mobster who was with Perry. I was like, I was looking that guy up, and I was like, oh shit, he's in a million movies. And I didn't. This is his yeah. last film. I didn't even recognize him because he didn't have the yeah. mustache or anything. So it was just, it's just a lot. There's a lot of people in here, and and I love that the soundtrack. It jumps from New York to it does the kind of New York. It's like da, 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 and then it goes to like the jungle and it kind of changes. Like you know what I mean? It switches and seems so it gets a little bit more savage. It's all like well, Cannibal Holocaust, like I said, is very very has a great finesse about it. This is that without the finesse completely. Yeah, no, um, Cannibal Holocaust is definitely the more serious film, and it's a much, it's one of my all time favorite films. This is not. But this movie has such a special place in my heart. This was like one of the easiest to find, one of the like widest distributed cannibal movies. It was the second one I saw. My video store also had Jungle Holocaust, so I saw that first. And that was a good one to start with. Took me a while to find Man from Deep River only because they fucking had it hidden in the action section. I thought they didn't have it. You know, I wanted to see that yeah. movie. And then one day I'm like, out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, there's man from deep river all these years under my nose and i didn't know it you know um the prism home videotape of that but you know the cannibal film genre one of the things that's nice about it is unlike something like black exploitation or category three like once you get into it you can like watch it all there's like these are the core movies you can watch every single one of them and then you can move on with your life. But you can really watch all the key cannibal movies and um, and be done with it. So yeah, there's probably only about if you, if uh, probably a dozen major ones, and then two dozen if you, you start branching out. Like, and what I say about this, like as we know, like the history, we have Man from Deep River by Lindsay in '72 or so, 
And then we have uh, Jungle Holocaust in 76, 77 by Ruggiero, who was gonna, that was offered to Lenzi, didn't take it. Then Ruggiero, Ruggiero went on to do Cannibal Holocaust, and then oh, Lenzi did Eaten Alive, then he did Cannibal Ferox. And, but there's also Mountain of the Cannibal got in there and some other ones, Primitives. But Crap in reality, yeah. Yeah. But in reality, I feel like, Although there were jungle adventure movies afterwards, like Catherine uh, Ma- Amazonia and Cut and Run and NASCAR Dinosaur Valley, I think the last the last nail in the coffin is Ferox. I think by Holocaust, the animal killings were pushing it, and I think they were extreme. But when Ferox came out, everybody was just like, "That's that's that's it's over. Stop it!" And like, and, and when we get to the pig, by the time the the wild boar scene, it's just fucking, it's so much, you know. You know? I um. You know, I, I don't want to be like that guy who's always um, one of the only people willing to publicly say that he doesn't give a fuck about the animal scenes. But like, the more I think about it, it's just irritating how upset people are by them. It's it's irritating how like sanctimonious people are about it. It's like these movies have already been made. Okay, yeah, no one is doing this today. Okay. No, no. I am not a guilty party by watching this movie and being amused by it. This movie would not be anywhere near as effective, anywhere near as sick, anywhere near as powerful without those scenes. Should they have been done? Of course not. That's not even like a topic I, I feel of that way about Holocaust. But like, but like, I don't care. Like, I really would be lying if I were to care i'd be lying if i were to say that i found those scenes particularly hard to watch i think those scenes are really um are really interesting and really gripping and they make these movies a lot sicker you know and they blend the, uh, reality and fiction in a way that is extremely powerful like if the filmmakers were willing to do that maybe you know maybe some of this other stuff was a little bit rougher than it needed to be you know like where's the line um but i i find the animal scenes to be not only effective but they really are a key element to these movies and um unapologetically i like these movies and i don't think they would be nearly as powerful without those scenes i really don't um i I mean i think you are right i just think that i don't know this is such a weird kind of moral thing here for me but I think that the quality of Holocaust is so much better than Ferox. So I always found it so weird that Holocaust got most of the shit because it's just an effectively well done movie, even though it's doing the same thing that Ferox or Primitives or is doing. And and it's just so weird. The the it's like so if I do a good job making you disturbed, I get yelled at, even though this guy's doing the the worst. And that's just so it's hypocrisy. But like I said, I don't enjoy it. Um, and I still think it was too late. I like, I like, I think that Lindsay even knew better. He's like, I shouldn't be doing this. And there's like, fuck it. Like, even then, like, you know what I mean? They were, they argued about the, the muskrat thing in the Holocaust about doing it. So it was just like, they knew better at that time. And that was kind of, like I said, the last hurrah. And, but Lindsay just that whole thing, I think that argument who he was the father of the cannibal genre, but Diodato was the king. So he was just like, I got to one up this son of a bitch. So I feel like they literally were just trying to one up each other in the jungle at that point. I mean, yeah, vegetarianism was on the rise in that time in um, world history. In the States, you had the explosion of health food stores, natural foods. Uh, you know, this was not a time period where people had had not um, started thinking about these things. And, um, you know, like, it, it's still like, I don't know. I um, I could lie. I could act really repulsed by the animal violence in these movies, but I'm just not. Um, I mean, I don't, I, I mean, it's okay. That, I, I think that these animal, um, these animal mutilations are really some of what makes these movies so effective and so powerful. And so I mean, it works for Holocaust. I think it works for yeah. Holocaust because that definitely without that and Holocaust, that's when people don't watch the animal. I'm like, I know it's messed up, but it's, def- it's directly related to the effectiveness of the film. Like in the the way it's shot and everything, I know it's fucked up, but it's just the way it is, um, and, and it's a product of its time. Like I mean, we do this so many fucking times. Every review I do, I'm like, of course there's rape in this. It's a product of its time. Whatever. I mean, if you guys are stupid enough to start raping people because you watched a movie, then you should be locked up. 
or something. There's just get help. You need help. You know what I mean? Like, it's just something like that. It's just the stuff. It's just nonsense to blame the media for it. But it's 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 done. I understand what you're saying. But I you have to give a warning to people. I think a warning's fine for it. But if it's called Cannibal Holocaust, they should know what the fuck they're watching or Ferox or whatever, right? So you see, like somebody write a review on like some Daily Grindhouse and they're offended by something. It just makes me laugh. Yeah, people are. Um, it's hard for me to accept that there are people, right? Like there are people who would intentionally watch something called "Make Them Die Slowly" and then be offended by anything. You know, I mean, it's like yeah. this artwork. It's just like so in your face, and that's what was so crazy. I, I like it didn't seem weird in, at all in the '80s and '90s to walk into like a mainstream colorful video store where there's families everywhere you know and like people renting disney movies for their kids and like there's make them die slowly I mean, there's ilsa there's it didn't seem weird at all um and you know now i don't you know i don't know people have gotten more and more uptight i think and uh um, weird ways yeah in weird ways they really have um you know i mean we um Ultraviolent would get complaint letters sometimes because there, it's not age restricted. And so, you know, Borders, Hastings, they would sell it to whoever would want to buy it. And um, sometimes an angry parent would write one of these chains. And the luckily, the people at the higher ups there just thought it was funny. They didn't give a shit. But they would forward the stuff to us. And I actually um, wrote this woman back who was like, I'm sure you would agree that your magazine is not for children. And I'm like, no, actually, like, I grew up, you know, reading Chaz Ball and, reading, you know, like, getting um, interested in um, in movies and in horror movies was a very positive thing in my childhood. And, no, I don't agree with you. I don't think that there's anything uh, particularly adult about uh, about Ultraviolet Magazine. And uh, I did not hear back after I uh, responded in such a way, but, you know. They're very funny to go through and read the complaints in the old Fangoria magazines. I oh, remember yeah. just, just laughing hysterically at them, like people getting mad that Jason was referred to as a mongoloid. And it's just like, what are we even, what is this? Like, shut up. <laughs> Fucking take care of your kids, man. Go away. What is wrong with you? So, so like, how do you think this stacks up against the other cannibal films of the, uh, the Italian cannibal films? I mean, it's not as good as Holocaust, right? I feel really like I shouldn't even say this out loud. Cannibal Holocaust is really the only great cannibal film. Like Cannibal Holocaust is a great movie. I like cannibal movies. I've seen them all. I enjoy them, but nothing comes anywhere near as close, you know? Anywhere near as close. Talk about bad grammar. But I mean, I like Mame Lai, you know? I like Laura Gemser. They're two of the most beautiful women in the history of the world. So I'll watch anything with them. You know, they're, those are fun movies. But man, compared to Cannibal Holocaust, everything else pales in comparison. Make Them Die Slowly is probably the second most notable cannibal movie just because it's so outrageous. And there's that weird, weird element of it being simultaneously one of the sickest movies you'll see, but just so goofy, you know? Like most of the sickest movies I can think of aren't comedic in the way that make them die slowly is you know last house on the left has the bumbling cops has like some intentional like stupid humor the untold story same thing yeah. but like it make them die slowly you just have these vicious vicious scenes juxtaposed with this like adr you know and like don't even get me started on imbeciles who don't understand that these movies are in english like there's people who oh i watched it in italian why the fuck would you watch make them die slowly in italian i hate you know? that shit it's in english I hate it. or people who like yeah like um everyone's excited about this new godzilla movie people who go to see one movie of the year will tell you it's the best movie of the year you know i saw one movie this year it was this and it's the best movie of the year fuck you anyway um this Godzilla movie was fun. I enjoyed it, but I liked the crappy dubbing. Like when I was getting into Godzilla movies as a kid, yeah, a big part of the kitsch to me was the awful dubbing. You know, so I would rather see a badly dubbed Godzilla movie than a Godzilla movie in Japanese, as idiotic as that may sound. 
very bad comparison because Make Them Die Slowly is in English. But, well, you got to watch um, your Italian ones in English because all the actors oh. that you would know are speaking in English on set and often are dubbed over by themselves. So why would you watch right. an actor like um, Oliver Reed fucking in a, dubbed in Italian, you morons? Like, you're fucking stupid. Right. Uh, just so, so you like can hear Fabio like Testi's Lorraine real Grisselle, voice? Like, what's that? Uh, just so you can hear Fabio Testi's real voice right. in Italian? No. It makes no sense. Idiotic. But apparently, Lorraine DeSalle sounded like Pepe Le Pew. She had this like really funny French thick accent. And so that is not her voice in uh, okay. House on the Edge of the Park or Make Them Die Slowly. I cannot believe that it, it wouldn't have been Zora Karobas because no. I, you know, I've spoken with her. Her English is not good. You know, she's trying. She's speaking in English in the movie. But um, like, oh, and there's a musical number. Let's not forget the scene where they sing. Um, that, any non-musical with a musical number, it has like, that's one of my favorite things in cinema is when characters just uh, burst into song. And uh, we have that here. But, I actually uh, think it's kind of a touching moment. I know it sounds weird, but I think it is kind of a touching moment just because, I mean, what are the Westerns going to sing? But it's also funny because it's like, what are the Italians going to think the Americans are going to sing? <laughs> Red River Valley, right? Some some Western classic song. Um, but no, I, I actually really like that part. And I like the, the line too. Um, let her die. Uh, let me die too quickly. That whole thing like there, because it works perfect with the make them die slowly, which should have been the actual title. <clears throat> I think um, when the dust settles and you go back and you look at the can the short-lived but um, fascinating cannibal film genre, sub-genre, um, Make Them Die Slowly definitely jumps out, even if only that, like, I mean, Cannibal Holocaust is certainly also an exploitation film, and I don't, just because something's an exploitation film does not mean it's a bad film. But, but the way it was marketed, very much exploitation. Um, but Make Them Die Slowly, from the trailer to the poster art, um, very in your face, very not of its time, you know? Much more like a 70s movie than an 80s movie. And um, it was kind of a hit, you know? It wasn't, um, and who knows? It's really hard to track these things, but the videotape was everywhere. You know, now people pay a lot of money for it, but that was not a hard to find tape by any stretch of the imagination. And, uh, you know, I remember whenever I would travel, I would see it like in various places too. Um, you know, supposedly Elvira refused to um, post it. I don't know, I don't even, I don't recall the details of that, but that supposedly got it some press and I don't know. Joe Bob Briggs did an early review of it. Uh, he was a big, uh, Counter of Make Them Die Slowly that helped it because um, he was taking off in that time period in yeah. the early 80s when his column was taking off. So I do think you said to mention the kind of humor with the, the, the nastiness and I would say that blood sucking freaks might hit the same kind of page. That might be the only but that's even more <laughs> intentional humorous plus you know I think there is intentional <laughs> humor in blood sucking freaks more so, but I still feel like there might be some similarities there. Blood sucking freaks is a good example of an extremely sick movie with intentional humor. Um, yeah. I feel like the humor is more intentional in blood yeah. sucking. Freaks, you I know? Do. Yeah, I do too. This is like like the dipshits, the so bad it's good dipshits. Make them die slowly is the kind of movie that they laugh at, you know. Yeah. Um, Blood sucking freaks know what's laughing at, I don't think. Laughing with, you know, enjoying maybe sick yeah. fucks like us, but, you know, no one's like, this is camp, you know? Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, Campbell Ferox, camp. it is definitely unintentional, Lala, and ate his genitals. That's definitely unintentional. I, I just can't I believe love, somebody thought that was fine. Like, they're, whoever dubbed that. I love bad dubbing. I love, and like, I would sit down with these people, Jaretta, Jaretta, I'm like, why did you say these things? Like, you knew you were saying, and, and then I would talk to her a little bit and realize that she kind of talks that way. Like, in reality, she sort of talks like um, a dubber or a dub character. Like, um, her syntax will be a little bit unique or so. Like, it, it's, it's mind boggling. Or David Hess, I'm like, in Hitchhike, okay? Why, like, you're on set, you're helping with the dialogue, you're doing your own voice, and you're going to call this guy a fucking pizza eater as an insult? Like, <laughs> like, why didn't you step in and be like, 
you know, like, I don't know that an American would insult an Italian with you fucking pizza eater, but he went for it. So, um, $2. And you would just be like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I mean, well, I think sometimes they just want to get it over with. Speaking of Goretta Goretta, man, the lines that she has in um, Shocking Dark is fucking insane. I'm just like, jaw on the ground. Like, that's the yeah. kind of, I'm just like, who the fuck wrote this? It's so yeah. absurd. The absurdity is just next level stupid. Um, Absolutely. So when you, when you compare this to other 1981 movies, where does this sit up top? I, I feel like, I, I think uh, like you probably, is it is it above the beyond or no? Oh, no, 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 no. no. Thank you. I hope not. No, the beyond is way above. Um, yeah, no, this is not one of my favorite movies. It just isn't. Um, I enjoy this film, but it is... Um, no, it has plenty of competition in 1981. So you're looking, uh, if I go down a list, will you say better or worse? You want me to say better or worse than... No, no uh, explanation. Just you like it. You better like or it worse better. than Make Them Die Slowly? Yep. Is that the game we're playing? Okay. Yep. And now remember, these are internet movie database, so these weren't all widely released in 81, but that's the list they're not. I understand. So okay, I'm not, not gonna, I'm not going to be... I, I already I'm gave stickler. you shit about the title. I'm not going to be a dick about the 81. <laughs> I'm not going to be like, I spit on your grave was not released in 78, except for in three, you know, it's like in 1980. I'm not going to do that. Okay, go ahead. Day of the Woman, you know, it was on a theater. but uh, No, it was. Okay. I, I, it was Day of the Woman in what, like 78, and then they released it, was, it later. But right? yeah, the Demi Moore poster and campaign is at 1980. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Possession. Oh, Possession is like the Polish movie Possession? Yeah. Oh, it's one of the greatest movies of all time. Yeah, that's way better. Thank you. All right. Uh, Evil Dead. Better. Evil Dead's better. Better than uh, Make Them Die Slowly? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. America, we in London. Worse. My Bloody Valentine. Worse. Howling. Better. Scanners. Better. Burning. Better. Worse. Right? Worse. It's like right the eye doctor. Wait, can you go back? I want to <laughs> compare again. I, and then she's like, uh, all right. Friday 13th Part 2. Better. Halloween 2. Better. Piranha 2. <laughs> Piranha 2. Um, pass. <laughs> it's too, that's too, I guess worse. I guess Piranha 2 is worse. I don't know. The Beyond. Better. Way better. Galaxy, Galaxy of Terror. Better. The Prowler. Better. Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker. Oh, um, better. Happy birthday to me. About the same. Funhouse. Fun House Wars. Dead and Buried. Better. Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Dark Knight, of the, like the TV Dark Knight of the Scarecrow? Worse. House by the Cemetery. Better. Way better. Hell Knight. Mm, better. Madman. Worse. Night School. Worse. Burial Ground. Way better. And absurd. Absurd? Ugh, come on. Monster Hunter. Um, I like the gore scenes. Worse. Do two more. Just Before Dawn. Better. Nightmare and a Damaged Brain. Nightmare and a Damaged Brain. Way better. See, I mean, that's, that's, and I didn't even, there's so many more. I, I didn't name The Pit. There's tons of them. Madhouse, Strange Behavior. There's a lot of good movies from 81. Yeah. A strong year. It's a very strong hour. I, I looked at that list initially and I was like, oh, Cannibal Ferox makes my top 10. And then I'm like, I don't know if it does, but I don't think it does. I don't think it can, honestly, unfortunately. No. I, I thought I would, rewatching it and then watching all these other movies next to it, it's just, it, it can't. I mean, so, so Cannibal Ferox, people... it's like, it has like a special place. It's sort of yeah. like, um, you know, like um, The Girl, the Body, and the Pill is not one of my favorite movies, but it's one of my favorite Herschel Gordon Lewis movies, you know? It's like, I, I, you can't talk about Herschel Gordon Lewis without 
mentioning that movie without going back and revisiting that movie. You can't talk about cannibal movies without Make Them Die Slowly. And it has a special place. Once you get into the better movies with these cast members, you have to revisit it. Um, and it's a fun one. It's a good party title, depending on the attendees at your party. Yeah. But um, fuck it. I'd put it on with whoever was over. Um, yeah, especially if you want them to go home, if you don't like them. I put on a racer head once to try to get somebody to go home. They watched the whole thing. No. Uh, and they were a normal person. Well, I guess they weren't as normal as I thought they were. They fit. And they weren't a movie fan, but they fucking watched Eraserhead. It's like, all right, guys, it's time to go ahead. Eraserhead's on. He just killed a baby. Leave my house. <laughs> no, but I, I would put this as, like, I mean, it, it, the two names are always, it's Holocaust and Ferox. When I first saw Holocaust, I was about 15, 16. I watched Ferox the same night back to back. And my mind was blown. It was never That's the same wild. after that. That's I, just, wild. I was like, on bootleg tapes in my bedroom. I was just sitting there watching. I, I walked out. I watched them both. I was like, oh, I just saw the craziest movies ever. She was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I shouldn't have been watching that shit. Yeah, I saw these movies wildly out of order. I didn't see Cannibal Holocaust until I started trading tapes. And I knew all about it. And I thought, you know, I'd seen the stills. I thought, like, it was going to be like these other movies. I didn't realize how, like, what I was in for. It really, oh, my God. I just instantly fell in love with that movie. The way that movie made me feel was really something. Definitely a profound moment of my youth. My late youth. I, I didn't see that until I was in like well into my teens. As opposed to these that I saw like in junior high. You know? So. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Like I, I saw my Romero stuff, you know, 8, 9, 10 and stuff like that. But then you get older. I saw my Tempe stuff. Even my low budget stuff, you know, 12, 13 like that but then some of the stuff is harder to get your hands on like you, you just can't when you're 10 years old 12 years old you can't just buy cannibal holocaust without somebody giving you helping you out here and and then eventually right. your your parents start to give up i think after a certain point they start at 13 14 they're like it's a lost cause I'm, i can't fight him watching this shit he's gonna see it so then they kind of just don't want to know what you're buying or asking for for christmas at 12 or 13 it just is on the, it's in the present you pick it out and it'll be under the yeah. tree but uh, that's kind of how we went. I, I, is there anything else you want to talk about in Cannibal Ferox? Anything else about 1981 as a whole? Any, I'm any excited to talk about some some of these other movies that you have me oh, lined yeah. up for. I think it'll be fun. Um, De- for sure. We got I some good ones. En- yeah, I always enjoy this. So I appreciate you coming on. Is there anything you want to plug? I don't really have anything I need to plug. I keep doing commentary tracks. Bruce and I just did Run and Kill. Um, that I think we did a damn fine job. You know, the August Underground trilogy is finally hitting a mainstream audience. I think that's interesting. Um, insane. I'm going to be on a podcast talking about that in the near future. I enjoyed revisiting those, doing those commentaries, doing a new interview. That was fun. But um, yeah, no, watch for um, hopefully a new issue of Ultraviolet eventually. It's taken forever, but it's going to be good gonna blow minds yet again so i appreciate you coming on it's always it's always a pleasure talking about old horror movies and everything like that and uh till next time all right man you take care but what matters is the fact that she brought back confirmation of the correctness of her theory thus contributing to the destruction of a cruel myth the notion that man eats man she has demonstrated in some that anthropophagy does not exist. Thus it is with great pride, in the name of this institute, that I bestow upon Gloria Davis the academic title of Doctor of Sciences and Anthropology, with an honorable mention in the form of this gold medal. Gloria? Gloria?